previously on Home Less. February's halfway done. You're through January. Are you starting to think March and spring? The thing with the a homeless camp is it's a little tiny world. And people get trapped in this world. Yeah, they do. Everybody's laying down in the same shit in this toilet, but it's always one or two that want to get up and piss on everybody and then want to lay back down in it. Our music provides an outlet for me. We got a lot of people who hurt. Mm -hmm. They hurt bad. I was always destructive. It took me a lot of time to get to where I'm at now. My higher power brought me here. Did so much bad. I think that's part of why I'm doing what I'm doing. I think that was a hell of a job. Is it a daily thing? I sleep in. Got to get myself right. You know what I'm saying? I got kids. Already, if you can't tell that everything's not great stage. I want to leave this place, but can't leave the place. I have to make a choice. What's on your mind today? I don't even know, dog. I'm just blank, blank minded right now. I hardly believe that. Huh? I want to do something different. This is getting old. Living here, you mean? It's the life, bro. Did you did you work construction? I did. Did, I did for years. And fencing. Fencing and all that kind of stuff. How long you been here? Been here? I just got tent here like a week or two ago. But like I've been coming here off and on since they tore down our other camp, Bulldozers, on the 14th. But I was over at the quarry camp more often than that. But I've been I'm all over the place. I've been in tents since uh, like September. Uh. I, yeah, I, I got lost actually and I wandered through camp and I fixed the generator at the other camp wandering through and I just kind of kept coming back and you know, left my stuff and stuff like that. And well, kinda... What brought you back? Brought me back? Um, all my people pretty much. Most of my people, they're all gone now and I made new people. You know what I mean? Just trying to do what I can with what I got. It ain't much, but I do what I can. I had no criminal record until I was 30. Got caught up once because I put my hand on my ex's mouth. She was fucking trying to get me caught up and go to jail and stuff like that. 
just, you know, shush, nothing violent, nothing crazy, but that's felony strangulation. I spent two months in jail while she sold everything that I owned. And then uh, now I'm, you know, where we are. That was recent? Uh, October 7th, 2019. Yeah, just want to get technical. And yeah, tried to get up legitimately for a long time, but uh, you really couldn't, you know what I mean? Set up for failure. Kind of hard to make it to court when you don't know uh, when your court date is. When they change the court date three times in a month, you even change, uh, you know, judges one time. Zoom meetings, not getting your mail because you know homeless. You know what I mean? It's hard to keep up with that kind of shit. I probably said it's been about three weeks here with my people that moved over here from the other camp before I was like allowed to walk freely. Lower. What's your outlook on things? Living the dream. Love life. You know what I mean? Nightmare of the dreams too, but I mean, you know what you got, man. There ain't no one fancy talking about it. Because say what you want, man. Homeless people might be, you know, whatever you want to call them, but like the most generous people I've ever met, people that are homeless that have nothing, they'll give you their last dollar to shirt off their back. You know what I mean? And uh, I've met a lot of decent people out here, and I don't care what anybody says, man. Like, I've met good people, I'm good people that are heroin addicts, that are fucking meth addicts. Good people. Doesn't change who they are on the inside. People have moral compasses. It just depends on, you know, how they act on them or not. I mean, every action that you take and the consequences that follow are a reflection of who you are. You can't hide from yourself, Confucius say. Do you have a desire to get out of this situation? I did for a long time, but now I don't know if I'm gonna dig my way out of this hole and I've accepted that fact and I've uh, recluse myself to that, that fate. But it is what it is. If I do, I hope I do, I'm gonna try. But I've been trying for two years. Every time I almost get out, it's ripped out right off from underneath me, man. Like I, like I said, dude, uh, I got caught up once. I had no criminal records until I was 30, 32 now. Got caught up once. Been rearrested nine times. Then no new charges, same shit, right? Nine times, nine. Why, because you, you missed court or something? Yeah, basically, missing court and stuff like that too. And then they st uh, all my stuff gets stolen. You know, as soon as I get arrested, and I have to start over again, and again, and again. And uh, it gets tiring. And then uh, now I'm just kind of just playing by ear, man, just doing what I got to do to get through the day and uh, see what happens next. But I really don't think too far of plans. Like, what am I going to do tomorrow? That's a fucking loaded question. What am I going to do tonight? I have no fucking idea. I'll probably be warm in my tent and I'll have propane and I'll be fed. My basic necessities are all I really can have any concern about, man. But the, the distant future is uh, very largely unset and unseen. You know, that's another reason people do drugs around here. It's a little bit depressing as shit. And it's cold outside. Mm -hmm. You know what makes it not so cold? Meth. Facts of life. You know what also sucks? You can't sleep. If you're homeless, you can't sleep during, at nighttime, especially in the summertime, because people are going to fuck with your shit and they're going to fuck with you while you're sleeping. You just got to sleep during the day. You know what makes that easier? Drugs. What do you need? Mm -hmm. What do you need? What do I need? Mm hmm. I couldn't answer that question entirely. If you step back and assess your life. If I did some self-introspection, which I do regularly, yeah, I need a job, I need structure, and I need fucking a car and a cell phone. That would get me well on the way to being a person again, to being a productive person. You know what I mean? And then probably treatment. Because mm -hmm. I had a drug habit before, now I have a drug problem. Put up another, uh, another fucking, you know, fucking support up here. And if you need to have another support, man, just fucking take one. Right here, you go out there to the ground. You've got postal diggers, dig yourself a hole, bury it down a little bit, tamp in the dirt, maybe put some water in the freezing. It'll be a good temporary fix. <laughs> 33 now, you know what I'm saying? You know, I've been doing this yeah, for a long time now. Walmart here, bro. Nevin? It's old, bro. You know what I'm saying? Day by day, we're about how you gonna get a fix. My mom's in um, ICU right now. Cold, you know. Having all them tubes in her now, she's getting ready to go into a long process of rehabilitation. She went to uh to the hospital for a drug overdose and never came out. Had COVID, ended up in the, in the, um, in the coma. Right in that, in that port right there. I went in there and um, she was just sitting back. My mouth open. I know she didn't look right. I turned on her side. A bunch of fluid came out of her mouth, her nose. 
I see him pumping him with the C, uh, CPR and hitting him with the Narcan, one after another. She came out of it, you know what I'm saying? But she, I knew she had fluid on her lungs. She had too much liquid in her mouth, you know what I'm saying? So we made her go. You know what I'm saying? The ambulance gambler had to dra drag her off to the, to the camp to get her there. So she got COVID. She went from having two oxygen masks, two down her nose, down her throat, to now she got a bowl in her throat. You know what I'm Do you know how to start? getting out of this life or is it a situation where you just don't know how like you, you feel stuck you don't know where to turn the help is there you know what i'm saying the help is there dog it's, it's literally just a phone call and a car ride to, to, to help you know what i'm saying i just need to get this out of my system you know what i'm saying and i'll be normal but the hardest part about changing with me is it's a, it's a responsibility that's gonna come with it you know what i'm saying you know, I've been through it, I've been through this so long, bro. I've been through I've been through it so many times. With mentors, you know what I'm saying, uh, sponsors, all type of stuff. I've been through all of that. I think it's about time we need to step up and be somebody mentor. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I know what comes after the first step. <laughs> I don't know how to take the first step. I don't know how to take it. I don't know what it is. I don't know how to take it. You know? Pick up that phone, I guess. I should have been dead a long time ago. I don't know how many more choices you're going to give me, so I got to make it soon. Since we've been born, we've been created to be society's puppets, meaning that we've taught to live a certain way that society deems uh, okay. So when you're li living outside of those, uh, what they would say, normal uh -huh. lifestyles, or, you know, living in a tent, you start to, you know, be viewed as uh, an eyesore of some kind. Me, myself, personally, this is just life. You know, I've never, I never thought that I'd be living in a tent and I'd be okay with it, you know? Matter of fact, my whole view of people living in tents were, was was way different when uh, when I thought about it. Now, it's, it's just normal people, you know? Today's a, pr a pretty good day considering that last night it was brutally cold and the night before that, brutal. I'm a survivor. <laughs> Going through stuff like this will make it easier for you to survive in any situation that comes up. You know, I feel like I can truly survive out in the world no matter what. How do you make it? <laughs> I, I swear to you, I think it's God. Because honestly, all the things that are being provided, all of the, all of the, everything. Like even the mental state that you gotta be in to not want to just pull the, push the panic button, you know? It has to be God. And I don't have to be homeless. I could leave right now and go stay with my father in Kentucky. I can go stay with a cousin right now here in Minnesota, but you know what? I don't choose to put my burden on these people. You know, I should be able to take care of myself because I'm a man, you know? And I'm, I'm a humble man, even though, you know, I don't like asking for help. And that's probably what people are saying is my, is my downfall, you know, not wanting to reach out for help. Because I believe that when you ask for help, you're now, um, you owe this person. And no matter what this person may come and ask you, you'll be obligated to do it for them. Yeah, I haven't asked no social workers or nothing for nothing either. You know, but I've, I've re I, I talked to a few recently and, and got some uh, some aid from uh, from the county. Okay. You know, not the kind of aid that you need, but food stamps help. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Three months from now, I would hope to be uh, housed. But if not, how do you I hope that that's going to happen? 
I've been speaking with some of the uh, the county workers here in uh, Tennessee County and stuff, and I got a referral recently to a place. But we'll see what happens. If they offer you an apartment, will you take it? Um, <laughs> I'm supposed to take it, but I can tell you the truth. I'm gonna still be out here. What? Why is that? It's hard. It's cold, like you said. Yeah, but I got friends out here, and they're not gonna be housed. So I'll be out here visiting them, or... Do you feel like you'd leave them behind and that wouldn't be right? Yeah, that wouldn't be right. Especially all the... Man, you know, we've been through a lot down here together. I don't think we, as a group, will probably not want to split up. Hmm. Have, have your kids ever visited you? Here? No. My oldest wants to come visit me, but uh, I haven't told him to. I don't mind. I, I think I'm thinking about having them come visit me. But like I said, society views this as an eyesore. This as uh, mm -hmm. uh, Skid Row or something, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of wondering if I want my son to see me like that. How do you view it? It's just a regular day. A regular place, regular situation, you know? Would you prefer to be elsewhere? Of course. Send me to Hawaii. <laughs> you know, put me on a beach. <laughs> well, what about uh, just here in Minnesota? Where would you rather be? Hmm. Nah, nowhere. I'd rather be here. Is that truthful? Mm-hmm. My willpower and my spirit is strong. So, that's basically what this is a measure of. So you think your true self comes out here? Mm -hmm. You gotta find yourself. Do this. I'm back, bro. Today. I'm good. Not bad. I'm going to work and leave in the way of the dance. I'm not going to get over the business. Yeah, yeah. Were things pretty, um, pretty quiet over the weekend? Yeah, I think we were. Got a little mental patient over here. That's about it. If there's no disturbances for a while, are people here appreciative, or do some of them say like, "That's getting kind of boring here"? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Boredom. They, they'll get bored and, and call chaos amongst themselves. This humbled me actually, because I used to hate this. I used to get mad and be like, "Oh my god, it's so messy! How can you stand it?" But then when I was cleaning it, and then when we would leave the tents, there's so much shit would come up missing. Now I know why they want to mess. <laughs> it just didn't, because if you keep it messy, they have to take some too long to fucking dig to find the good stuff. You know? So it's a defense. It's a defense. Yeah, it's really a defense. How, how did you find your way here? Um, my friend was staying here, and we, me, and my four kids got evicted during COVID. We got housing in Mound, Minnesota, which I told them I did not want to go to Mound because it's 35 minutes out of the city. Mm -hmm. My kids, we are all from Southside. Like, we want to stay Southside. They wanted me to get a job. I worked in downtown St. Paul. And then some nights I would get stuck in the city trying to figure out how I was going to get home to my kids because the Mound bus stops at 7 p.m. and I didn't get off of work till after midnight. So this is building barriers. It's not, you know what I mean? It's not breaking them down. They're building them. That's all they're doing. People are not understanding families they're not getting to know families they're not you know what I'm saying like you have to know their story mm -hmm. and understand what their needs are tell me your story mm -hmm. I got cancer like seven years ago I worked my whole life was never on welfare it's my first time on welfare when I couldn't pay my electric and they turned it off I went to the county and I applied for assistance and they said that they could not do it they denied me and I'm like how the fuck are you gonna deny me like uh, my doctor's saying I can't work and that's why I'm on welfare you know what I'm saying otherwise I best believe bitch I'd be at work 
And then, so then you're denying me. And they're like, well, how come your bill's so high? And I said, because I've been on chemo for a year and a half. And then she's like, well, you don't have a job. How are you going to pay it next month? <laughs> I can't pay it next month. Period. That's why I'm on welfare. And then, so they didn't turn it back on. And I was scared it was going to take my kids. So I had just had surgery and had a rib removed and had the tumor taken out. So I literally lied to my job, started popping pills, and just fucking went back to work. It took me about a month. My landlord ended up helping get them back on. And then I ended up in the hospital for two weeks because my body couldn't take it. So ever since then, like going through all these systems and going through all these programs, like my whole life is dedicated to changing this shit. Because all I worry about is my kids. When I die, I want to know that my kids are going to be okay if I'm not here to help them. And when I realized that I had to change the whole system, man, I took that shit off me. Because I'm scared that if I die and my kids need somebody, I see what it is. It ain't no motherfuckers out here to help nobody. Sorry. Where are they? They're at their friend's house because they, they, they come here, but they don't want to do anything. You know what I'm saying? They, my kids gave up home, but I didn't. I promised them. I promised them that we was going to get a home, we was going to be a family again, and that we was going to get better. And all I want to do is build happy memories with my kids before I die. Because all they can remember is the bad shit now. That's her whole childhood now. All because the county wanted to deny me some shit. How long did you make a go of it out in Mound? We, well, we got evicted in a year. She went into our home when we wasn't there. When I told her I didn't want her to, she went anyways and took pictures and it was messy. Yeah, it was messy. There was some doors broken and some walls had some holes in them, which I admitted because my kids have, we all have emotional stuff because mm -hmm. of the shit that we've been through. So yeah, when my kids get mad, they slam doors and sometimes they hit the wall, but it's going to take a long time for my family to heal. How old are your kids? So they are 19, 16, 15, and 11. They're all girls. Um, Dad? No. So where did you go from Mound? The streets. Where'd your daughters go? The streets. <laughs> it's good. My kids is about that life. They, they what? They, they're about that life because they don't like going to shelters. We went to St. Anne's. We tried St. Anne's. St. Anne's is a family shelter? shelter? Yeah, family shelter. And so I did some research, right? Now, St. Anne's built transitional housing next mm -hmm. to their shelter. Mm -hmm. Did you know what that used to be? Mm -hmm. That used to be a psychiatric unit back in the day. Now, if you're spiritual and you get put there, guess what's going to happen? It's going to get spicy. Not to mention, there's stories of that place burning down, and they still rebuilt it. It, it seems everywhere you turn, there's there's these um, either spiritual or um, bureaucratic or legal so conflict. And, and, and so, because of those barriers, you're here. I mean, yes, you know what? I could have just took the shit. I could have just took what they was dishing out to me, right? And just said, oh, fuck it. Don't even do nothing. But I did it because I'm not going to do that. I refuse to do that. Not to mention, it made me cry. I used to cry for families. You know how many women out here really want to get sober? You know how many kids really want to go home? Mm -hmm. But it's the system that's keeping them from being sober, not them. It's the, it's the system that's keeping kids away from their families, not those families. What do you need? I just need a home. I need a home for my kids, right? And then after that, I just, I don't need nothing. I just want to help. What kind of home? I need a house. <laughs> One that they're never going to kick us out of. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck if the lights get shut off. We could do without that. But I just need something that they're not going to take away from us. Something that they're not going to take away from my kids. So my kids, because it takes at least a year for my kids to even start the gym, that that's their home. Because they're just waiting to get sick. Now, they, even, they don't even unpack anymore. What are your prospects right now? What do you mean? Prospects for a home. Well, <laughs> I just kind of gave up for a little bit just to enjoy the moment, you know, because I've never done that in a long time. And my kids gave up hope. I didn't give up hope, I just kind of take a break, you know? But so, my youngest called me and snapped, and my kids were like, get out, get out. So I'm fine, fine, all right, all right, all right. 
I start working on it. Because I know I can do it. Mm -hmm. It's just the work that you have to put into that. You know what I mean? Because I'm not just going to take anything. You can only turn down three. And they said I've already turned down two. Which I only turned on one. But since the second one was the same one as the first. It just automatically this one has been turned down. So they were trying to offer me a six month program. I'm like six months? We've been fucking homeless wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? And we've been in and out of homelessness for the last seven years. So six months what's that gonna do for us so i want a permanent thing mm -hmm. so but she's like she she got us on there and we're in there so but see i almost don't want to leave here which part of you wants to stay and which part of you wants to go yeah that's like 50 50 on this one because i feel like if i leave here then they're gonna win who the city the county the government like because we got rid of her because i can't protect them if i'm not out here Protect all these people, like, and I can't hear their stories if I'm not out here. I don't know what's broken. That's how I help fix it. You feel an obligation to this community? Yeah, to all my people, to everybody in this state, every color, every race. You know what I'm saying? Like to everybody out here. Even if it means living in this tent. Yeah, if I had to live in this tent to help people, but the only reason that I'm doing it is because of my kids. Mm -hmm. But then I just can't leave this. I can't leave this situation. You mean like I just can't? And I'm going to keep fighting. Will you always connect to those at the expense of moving on with your life? Well, yeah. <laughs> Man, those are, what, these are the realest motherfuckers out here. They live they live life in real life. You know what I'm saying? They, like, they know things they like mean. But do you see it holding you back? No. When's the last time you talked to your kids? Last night. This morning. <laughs> They're doing okay. They're okay. Yeah. But they want to go home. Uh, lately, they've been calling me just like, Mom, I want to go home. I just want to go home. It's hard because I want to go home too. But I know what it's like if I pick a home and the same shit keeps happening. It's just going to destroy them more. So that's why I'm making sure mm -hmm. that anything, every choice that I make is crucial. How can you ensure next time you find a home that it's something that's permanent? By what they're giving us, what I'm accepting. I got to know everything about it. The details. Like, you got to pay attention to the details to know what it is. If you th Do you think that if you find a place, you're going to find something wrong with it? No. Do I mean, there's always something wrong with something. I'm just naturally like that because I can literally, I have PTSD where I go into somewhere and I'm naturally critiquing. Mm -hmm. Automatic. Like, that's unnecessary. Do you have that's to turn that down when you find a home? 